Spring has finally sprung here in Ontario and we're on our first road trip of the season. We're in Prince Edward County, which is about two hours north of Toronto. In this video, we're gonna show you a whole bunch of great things that you can do here in Prince Edward County. And we're starting here at Sandbanks Provincial Park. Who knew there was a desert in Ontario? <laughs> Sandbanks Provincial Park is a must-visit destination for anyone looking to explore the natural beauty of Prince Edward County. Located on the shores of Lake Ontario, this park is renowned for its golden sand dunes, pristine beaches, and crystal clear waters. Sandbanks is within 15 minutes of Picton, Bloomfield, and Wellington, which are three popular towns to stay in. There's also RV parks nearby. The park is pretty big and offers three beaches, camping, biking, birding, boating, canoeing, fishing, sandboarding, and hiking with six trails to choose from. We went in April and there was no admission or parking fee, but this changes during peak season, which usually kicks off on Victoria Day long weekend in May, but don't quote us on that. The cost per vehicle the last couple years has been about $20, but we couldn't confirm the exact cost for 2023. During peak season, it's strongly recommended that you reserve your day use pass in advance because the park usually hits capacity. The park is somewhat accessible for those with mobility concerns. The park staff put out Moby mats, which run from the park store to the beach. The hiking trail we took to get to the dunes was flat and mostly gravel. There's also boardwalks over marshy and difficult terrain. You can bring food with you to the park, and you can bring a self-contained barbecue, but check with the park as they have certain restrictions. You can also grab a bite to eat at the restaurant in Sandbanks' park store at Outlet Beach, or stop by the canteen at Dunes Beach. Lost sand. A lot of sand. A lot of hills. <laughs> it's hard going up and down. Yeah, it's a good workout. Right, Grace? 15 minutes away from Sandbanks Provincial Park is Slake Brewery. Let's go check it out. Slake is a stunning independent brewery located on a working farm and built into the side of a limestone hill. From the tap room and patio, you get stunning views of Prince Edward County and the farm. Keep an eye out for pigs, sheep, and chickens as you sip your drink. For those who don't drink beer, Slake offers several non-alcoholic cocktails, locally made sodas, and fizzy water. They don't have any gluten-free beer here at this time. We found a picnic table looking out over the beautiful views of Prince Edward County and the water. Mark and Riley tried the Easy Lager, which they really enjoyed. Sam tried the Hatch, and Brian had the Mosey. If you like the beer you try at Slake, you can buy some on your way out. People sleep on Ontario. So many great places you can go. A weekend getaway to the country wouldn't be complete without a trip to an antique market. And we've got a good one for you. Porky's Place is absolutely packed with anything you can imagine. Located right in the middle of Prince Edward County, it's easily accessible no matter where you're staying. From the road, you can't miss it. Even if you're not hunting for antiques, it's worth stopping by just to see the eclectic collection of stuff here. We wandered through the outbuildings and tightly packed aisles for a good 45 minutes. Located just around the corner from Porky's Place is Huff Estates Winery. We popped in here for some wine tasting. You can enjoy your wine outside on a covered patio overlooking the vineyard. And starting in May, they'll be serving up delicious wood-fired pizza. <laughs> also located on the property is an art gallery and beautiful sculpture garden. Grace had a blast exploring the sculptures and running around. If you're looking to do a tasting but want something a little stronger than wine, head over to Kinsip House of Fine Spirits. Kinsip is a farm-based grain-to-glass distillery. Their spirits are fermented, distilled, and aged all on site. You can order a flight, which includes three spirits and one cocktail, for $15 per person. This place is great for kids. Grace loved watching the funky chickens wander around the farm, and they have some peacocks, but they seemed a little more shy than the chickens. There's a swing too, but maybe try this out before your flight of spirits. Lake on the Mountain. This natural curiosity sits 200 feet above Lake Ontario, providing a constant supply of fresh water with no apparent source. The lake is a remnant of the ancient glacial Lake Iroquois. 11,000 years ago, the waters of Lake Iroquois receded, leaving Lake on the Mountain and two others behind. It's a gorgeous lake with picnic areas and views of the lake in one direction and the Bay of Quinte in the other. What do you think? It's stunning, absolutely stunning. We'll be back. From the overlook, you can see the Glenora Ferry shuttling cars to the North Shore. The water from Lake on the Mountain flows down a short stream, then over a massive waterfall down to the bay. There's seasonal accommodations and dining here too, like Lake on the Mountain Resort, 
the Miller House Cafe, the Inn at Lake on the Mountain, and Lake Mountain Brewery. While there's lots of things to see and do in Prince Edward County, one of the major reasons for visiting the area is for its world-class food. Prince Edward County is considered a gastronomic hotspot, and I assure you it did not disappoint. The first spot on our list is Hartley's Tavern in downtown Picton. But don't be fooled by its name, this is not really a tavern. It's much more of a fine dining establishment than a drinking hole. The atmosphere is relaxed and dark, and it's got a very cozy vibe. Mark ordered the braised beef, and I had the hanger steak. And let me just say, they were both delicious. Mark's braised beef was so tender, he didn't even need a knife. And my steak was cooked perfectly with a beautiful char on the outside. Bloomfield Public House. This awesome lunch spot is located downtown Bloomfield and occupies an old bank building. They've done an amazing job repurposing the building. It's flooded with natural light thanks to the huge windows, and the bright white walls are a nice contrast to the exposed industrial concrete. They've even kept an old bank vault on the back wall. Bloomfield offers up seasonal cuisine from local farmers, wineries, and breweries. They also serve local beverages like Lemonade Dave, which was very refreshing. Just note that they only serve local stuff here, so no Coke or juice for the kids. We were so hungry we dove straight into our food before filming it, but you can see what's left of our burrata, which came with the house jam, grilled sourdough, and greens. Sam and Riley ordered agadashi tofu, and Brian and Lily ordered a big salad and a delicious curry soup. This spot is a must if you're in Bloomfield. Bocado serves up a seasonal menu of Spanish-inspired tapas. Located right on the main street in Picton, this place is bustling with people. The tapas was delicious, but the portions are pretty small if you're with a larger group. You'll need to order a lot of items to get your fill, but the food was really tasty. There's no kids menu here, and they don't serve juice. Grace is pretty adventurous when it comes to trying food, so she held her own. Midtown Brewing Co. Located in Wellington, Midtown Brewing Co. is a really cool spot with a nice patio and a fun atmosphere inside. They offer a great variety of beers and casual pub-style food. We ordered pizzas and they were great. They also have a kid's menu, and Grace's hot dog was huge and delicious. Mark wants to go back just for the hot dog. We would recommend this place if you're looking for something super chill and great for kids. If you're looking for something sweet, look no further than Slicker's Ice Cream, which has locations in Bloomfield and Picton. For 20 years, they've been serving up homemade ice cream using only local ingredients. We went to the downtown Picton location. We ordered the kids' breakfast, strawberry with chocolate, and Slicker's number one flavor, Campfire. This incredible and unique flavor literally tastes like roasted marshmallows over a campfire. It actually tastes like campfire, like smoky, mm -hmm. like smoky marshmallows that are actually cooked over a fire. We don't know how they achieved this, but as soon as you take a mouthful of this ice cream, your nose fills with the scent of burning logs on a fire, mixed with the familiar taste of slightly burnt marshmallows. Merrill House is a beautiful inn and restaurant just on the edge of downtown Picton. We'll dive deeper into the hotel next, but right now, we're talking about breakfast. We stayed here at Merrill House on our trip and ate breakfast in the beautiful and cozy cellar and dining room located on the lower level. Even if you don't stay here at Merrill House, you can eat here as the restaurant is open to the public. As guests of the hotel, our breakfast was included in our room rate, so your experience may differ from ours. But here's what our experience was like. Day one, we ate inside the cellar. Day two, we ate on the covered and screen patio. The patio is fantastic and we recommend eating out here if you can. Don't worry if it's a bit chilly, the staff can turn on the heaters. First, you're served delicious French press coffee, which you get to plunge yourself. I don't think coffee gets fresher than this. As you sip your morning coffee or green tea, you're presented with fresh baked and still warm croissants, fresh fruit, and freshly squeezed orange juice. Our mains were yummy and there's a nice variety of options to suit any palate. Some of the dishes we tried were lemon ricotta pancakes, gravlax on house-made sourdough, smashed avocado on house-made sourdough with poached egg, and Merrill House English breakfast. There's also omelet and yogurt parfait options on the menu. When it comes to where to stay in Prince Edward County, we're heading upstairs from the restaurant to the Merrill House Hotel. Built in the late 1800s for Edwards Merrill, a prominent lawyer and magistrate of Prince Edward County, who later became the mayor of Picton. This inn maintains its beautiful old world charm while providing all of the modern conveniences you'd expect from a luxury accommodation. The design and decor of the interior spaces is stunning. The owners have done a wonderful job showcasing the home's history and injecting some modern furniture and art, giving the inn a 
chic and luxurious feel. Each suite in the hotel has its own name and story, some of which can relate back to its previous life as a private estate. With their own character and decor, no two suites are alike here, and you could come back and stay in a different room and have a totally different experience each time. We had rooms on the second and third floor, and the rooms felt cozy and inviting with complimentary robes and espresso machines. The hotel is absolutely spotless too. The care and attention to detail at Merrill House does not go unnoticed. Be sure to check out Merrill House's website as they have lots more info and options there. We really enjoyed our stay here and the staff was very accommodating and welcoming. Plus, its location was a great jumping off point for the many attractions in Prince Edward County. And being located just steps to downtown Picton, you have all the amenities and dining options you could need. Okay, that was our weekend in Prince Edward County. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got value out of this video. If you did, please leave a comment below, give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.